This right next to me is the all new Mitsubishi Triton. It's bigger than before and it's also received a new exterior, new interior, new technology, more active safety and an all new powertrain. And like all new cars, it's also received a higher price tag. So is it something you should consider? Well, in this review, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. First, a brief overview about the model range, options and its pricing. Then we're gonna move on to the styling, then check out the cabin, then move on to the practicality. And I'm also gonna run you through the new powertrain. And of course, I'm going to drive it to see if you should buy one over the Ford Ranger. Let's start the video talking about a brief overview about the Triton. So it is available in either two wheel drive or four wheel drive. However, when you do move up along the range, all variants feature four wheel drive only. And the variant I am featuring is the top specification GSR, and it is priced from just over 63,000 Australian dollars. And in relation to options, it is available with four exterior colors to choose from. And it's also worth mentioning that only the dual cab versions will be offered. However, club chassis, club cabs, and manuals are on the way later this year. And also a special thank you to Brookvale Mitsubishi for allowing me to film their Triton demonstrator. They are located on the northern beaches in Sydney, New South Wales and they have a professional sales team and a brand new showroom coming very soon. And if you want to check them out I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's now move on to the styling. So the colour of this example that I'm featuring is finished off in graphite grey and in relation to the styling changes it features a twin headlight design. So up the top are LED DRLs and down the bottom are your full LED headlights with automatic high beam on and off function and it also receives a newly designed radiator grille up the front along with LED fog lights down the bottom and in addition to the GSR it receives this gloss black treatment up the front and if we move towards the side view of the Triton specific to the GSR it receives 18 inch gloss black alloy wheels that are wrapped in highway terrain tyres and also complemented by gloss black wheel arch cladding and in addition to that GSR treatment it also receives gloss gloss black roof rails, gloss black wing mirrors, gloss black door handles, privacy glass and a gloss black sail plane at the back along with plastic side steps on each side. And moving towards the rear design of the Triton, it features part LED tail lights at the back, along with halogen bulbs for the brake lights, reverse lights and indicators. And looking further down, it receives a plastic side step at the back and specific to the GSR, more of that gloss black treatment and that silver garnish. And in relation to its off-road features, all of those figures are on your screen now. And as always, styling is subjective. So write down your feedback in the comment section below of what you guys think of the overall design of the new L200 Triton. Let's now move on to the cabin. So before you climb inside, you have a remote key, keyless entry, and push ignition start. And once you climb inside, first impressions compared with the previous generation Triton, this is a massive improvement. And it is a lot more modern than before. And in relation to how all of the materials feel on the top surfaces, that all feels nice. Soft padding on the doors, even on the elbow padding as well. The center armrest is also soft to the touch and the top surfaces on the dashboard feel good. Even along here is squidgy. And there's also a leather wrapped steering wheel that feels very nice to hold, complemented by orange stitching. And the overall design itself is very similar to the four spoke wheel in the Outlander. But it does get a bit durable, like all dual cab utes when you search lower down, even on the doors. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with this interior. And in relation to its comfort features, the steering offers both manual tilt and reach adjustment. The driver's seat has electric adjustment along with lumbar support, however manual adjustment for the passenger, but both these front row seats can be heated and they are finished off in black leather with orange stitching. And if we move on to the infotainment, it all runs off this 9 inch touchscreen. I still like how they've kept the physical switches and dials and that can come in handy when you're wearing gloves on the farm. Or you can just use the touchscreen and overall it is pretty easy to use. And in relation to its key features, it has AM, FM, DAB radio, along with USB and Bluetooth integration. It also has satellite navigation with 3D mapping, along with voice recognition and a six speaker sound system. And in relation to smartphone mirroring, Apple CarPlay is wireless, whilst Android Auto is wired. As you can see on the screen, it is pretty responsive and clear. And in relation to the Triton safety features, if I just flick it into reverse, as you can see, it has a surround view camera where you can select different views around the car, such as your gutter, front view, side views, along with front and rear parking sensors and a rear cross traffic alert. And in relation to other key safety items, it has autonomous emergency braking with cyclists and pedestrian protection, 
adaptive cruise control with a junction assist, blind spot monitoring, as well as a lane keeping assist, driver attention monitoring, and right in front of me is an analog gauge cluster with a digital screen in the center where you can cycle through different views depending on what you want in your vision. And overall, it is very configurable in relation to what you want to see. And the dial in the center is your selectable four-wheel drive. So you have two-wheel drive high range, four-wheel drive high range, and four-wheel drive low range, along with a locking rear differential and active yaw control. This button here is your hill descent control. And towards the center, you have a drive mode button where you can shift it from eco or normal. And lastly, moving on to storage. So the center glove box goes down pretty deep. You've also got two small cup holders in the center and a wireless phone charging pad with a USB-C and a USB-A port along with a 12 volt socket. And specific to the GSR, you have these pop out cup holders on either side. There's also a dual glove box set up here. Very nice, they go far back, pretty spacious and you have some grab handles on the A pillars, sunglasses holder up the top here and on the doors, decent door bin storage that could also fit a big bottle of water. Let's now move on to the back seat. So as the Triton is wider, there is a lot more room for free adults in the back. I'm five foot nine. And as you can see, if I sit up straight, I have this front seat set in my driving position and I've got a decent amount of knee room, toe room, as well as a decent amount of headroom. And in relation to other key features, you have these grab handles along here, along with grab handles up the top here, there is also a single mat pocket behind the driver and a single mat pocket along with device holders behind the passenger seat. And towards the center, there is a 12 volt power outlet along with a USB-C and a USB-A port. No directional air vents. Instead, you have these roof mounted air vents with this fan speed control. You can also move this seat forward, revealing the jack and spare toolkit. And towards the center, you have a fold down armrest with two small cup holders and on the doors, decent door bin storage that could also fit a big bottle of water. And lastly for baby seats, these two outboard seats are ISOFIX compatible and right behind me, there is a single top tether point. Let's now move on to the tray. So just keep in mind that this tailgate isn't damped, so it is quite heavy, but overall the tub is wider and the overall size is bigger. You've also got four tie down hooks along with a spray and bed liner However, just keep in mind that there are no lights or power outlets like in other competitors. And in relation to dimensions, payload capacity, and curb weight, all of those figures are on your screen now. It is worth mentioning, however, that none of the Triton variants come with a hard cover, roller cover, or even a tow bar, as those are accessories you can option for your Mitsubishi dealer. Let's now move on to the powertrain. So under the bonnet is a brand new 2.4 litre twin turbo diesel engine and it's paired to a revised six speed automatic transmission with the option between a two wheel drive or this four wheel drive variant. And in relation to its key specifications, all of the figures are on the screen now. So this new engine puts out 150 kilowatts and 470 new meters of torque along with a 3.5 ton towing capacity. It's also worth mentioning that the L200 sits on a newly designed ladder frame chassis along with a redesigned suspension system that has been specifically tuned for Australian conditions. And it also uses the Super Select four-wheel drive two system with selectable off-road modes, active yaw control, heel descent control, and a rear differential lock. So let's now move on to the driving impressions. What is the new Triton like to drive? Starting off with visibility. I can clearly see what's in front of me, large side mirrors, decent side windows as well, and good rear visibility. And that 360 camera is very crystal clear as well. And in relation to how this drives in an urban environment, it has one of the best turning circles in the segment and you will notice the steering is lighter than before compared with the previous generation Triton. That is because they have replaced the power steering with electric steering so it makes a big difference when you're maneuvering it around the city for example and just overall improves the driving experience. It's also quite refined on the road for a dual cab ute. The brakes are progressive, the active safety apart from the driver monitoring system, all works really well. It does feel a lot more dynamic than before. I wouldn't say that this is now the benchmark in terms of how it drives and in relation to its performance. It's got good low down torque. In terms of an overall package, it's more refined and 
drives a lot better than things like a Toyota Hilux and the Isuzu D-Max. And in relation to its fuel consumption, the all-wheel drive variant of the Triton has a claimed figure of 7.7 .7 litres per 100, which is not bad. However, I couldn't get a real-time fuel consumption figure reading because this is a new car, so it isn't quite accurate. However, I will be reviewing other Triton variants in the near future, so I will have more information in the near future. So what is my final verdict on the new Mitsubishi Triton? Well, it comes with more tech, it's bigger than before, more practical, and also offers that 10 year warranty with the cat price servicing. And yes, prices have gone up and that driver monitoring system is very annoying. And yes, like I mentioned, it isn't setting any new benchmarks within its segment, but as a value perspective, I think this is one of the best options you can pick from. Then some of its key competitors like the Isuzu D-Max and the Toyota Hilux, but let me know what you think of my verdict in the comments section down below and if you did like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe and i will see you in the next film thanks for watching